Hello everyone! In this ANSYS how-to video, we will show you how to perform a response spectrum analysis. A response spectrum analysis is mainly used in place of a time history analysis to determine the response of structures exposed to the short, non-deterministic, time-dependent loading conditions, the most common examples being earthquakes and shock loading events. In a response spectrum analysis, the maximum response is calculated based upon response input spectrum. A simplified idea of base excitation is that we know what the movement of the base is. We calculate the response of each mode and then combine the results to estimate a peak response. In this video, we will focus on demonstrating the basic setup and solution of a response spectrum analysis. Are you ready? Let's get started. Response spectrum is a mode superposition analysis that is using results of a model analysis with a known spectrum to calculate displacement and stresses in the model. It is a linear analysis with constant stiffness and mass. The input spectrum is a graph of spectral value versus frequency that captures the intensity and frequency content of time history excitation. On the response spectrum graph, the x-axis is the natural frequency of the system and on the y-axis is the maximum response such as displacement, velocity or acceleration. The response spectrum will usually be provided to the user. However, the process can be described as follows. Assume a small model subjected to transient loading, one degree of freedom oscillator with known mass, stiffness and damping. Track the response such as displacement, velocity or acceleration over time. Notice that maximum absolute amplitude over time is captured. If we repeat this process for many oscillators with different frequencies and plot maximum response over time as a function of frequency, we can get the response spectrum graph. Note that in this case, damping is the same for each oscillator, but damping can be different and additional spectra can be generated for other damping values. By multiplying or dividing with a frequency, we can convert between acceleration, velocity or displacement spectra. We will focus our attention on base excitation by a single point response spectrum. This is the most common application. In such cases, boundary conditions only include those with a fixed degree of freedom defined by using fixed support, displacement, remote displacement and body-to-ground springs. At least one allowed boundary condition must be defined. Input excitation is acting uniformly on all support points. Three types of input excitation spectrum are supported – displacement, velocity and acceleration. The input excitation spectrum direction is defined in a global coordinate system. Recall from a model analysis, the participation factor is a measure of the response of the structure at a given natural frequency. Participation factors represent how much each mode contributes to the deflections and corresponding stresses and strains in a particular direction. For each frequency, we can get spectrum value S. The mode coefficient AI is defined as a factor that is multiplied by the eigenvector to give the actual displacement in each mode. Mode coefficients can be determined from the participation factor and the spectrum values. The response, displacement, velocity or acceleration can be calculated for each mode considering frequency, mode coefficient and mode shape. The response analysis estimates the maximum displacement and stress response in the structure by combining the response from each mode. We call this mode combination. There are different options that can account for damping or the effect of closed spaced modes interacting with each other. The default combination method takes the square root of sum of squares. This is uncorrelated, not accounting for mode interaction or the effect of closely spaced modes. Note that the purpose of the response spectrum analysis is to provide the engineer with a quick but useful approximation of what the peak response may be for situations of short, non-deterministic loading such as seismic event or a shock loading. 
However, this is not a detailed analysis, so we don't solve for the actual response of the system in the time domain, as we do with the more computationally expensive transient analysis. Let's see how we can set up and run response spectrum analysis. In this demo, we will show you a response spectrum analysis of a five-story building subjected to response spectrum acceleration G-loading. Open and archive WBPZ model of the building. The project is already set up to perform a pre-stress model analysis. Open mechanical via cell B4. Let's expand the branches in the project tree to become familiar with the model setup. The columns and the main floor beams along the outside perimeter of the building are represented with the line bodies. These line bodies are already matched with the beam elements. The beam elements have been assigned cross-sectional properties consistent with the building's I-beam specifications. Material properties of all beams are assigned linear elastic structural steel. A distributed mass has been scoped to the floor beams and assigned a mass to represent a specified design load for each floor. Expanding the static structural environment branch, we see that Foundation points at base of a building have all been fixed. Standard air gravity load is applied. Under analysis settings, large deflection is on. Expanding the model branch system C, a pre-stress model has already been set up to solve for the first 10 modes. Solve the model analysis. After model is complete, Highlight Solution Information Branch. Switch to Participation Factor Summary. Note the magnitude of Participation Factor for Mode 1. This mode dominates excitation in X direction. Return to the Workbench Project page. Drag and drop Response Spectrum Analysis System onto solution of the model analysis. Open Response Spectrum System D5. Recall that this is a mode superposition analysis. Under Response Spectrum Analysis Setting Branch, for mode combination type, we will take the default square root sum of the squares, or SRSS. While there are some closely spaced modes, they participate very little to the response in X direction, as we observed from model analysis. Insert an RS acceleration G load. Enter data provided for acceleration in X direction. Solve the response spectrum analysis. Under solution branch, to post-process maximum displacement resulting from this excitation, insert total deformation and directional deformation orientation in X axis. Note, there is no actual deformed shape available as this is just a quick calculation to approximate peak results from the mode shapes and response spectra input that was provided. This concludes the demo. Now let's summarize what we learned in this video. Response spectrum is a mode superposition linear analysis that is using results of a modal analysis with a known spectrum to calculate displacements and stresses in the model. Three types of input excitation spectrum are supported, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. The mode coefficients are calculated by the program from the modal analysis, participation factor, and the spectrum values, and this is used to combine the modal responses to estimate the overall peak response. Note that response spectrum analysis calculate the magnitude of the displacement and stresses in the structure, hence there is no deformed shape nor output as a function of time or frequency. I hope that you find this video informative. Thank you for watching and do check out our other courses to discover more useful learning resources.